Good afternoon and welcome back to probably the kind of Jeff video that you all know and love. This one's been said to me a number of times. Electric cars release more toxic emissions than gas-powered vehicles and are worse for the environment. A resurfaced study warns. This is from DailyMail.com, primarily talking about America. EVs weigh 30% more than gas cars, causing tyres to wear out faster. The tyre tread releases toxic particles 400 times greater than exhaust emissions. I'm not going to go through the whole article. The link is in the comments for you to go and read it. I tried to do that a minute ago on a video, and then I realised that, actually, I think this is about something slightly different, and I'm going to take a slightly different tack with this video. So let's look at the start of it. Electric vehicles may release more pollution than gas-powered vehicles, according to a report that's recently resurfaced. The study, which was published in 2022, so two years ago, has begun recirculating again after it was cited in a Wall Street Journal op-ed. It found that brakes and tyres release 1,850 times more particulate matter compared to modern tailpipes, which have filters that reduce emissions. So, instead of talking about the emissions that come out of the tailpipe, which is what we always seem to talk about when we're discussing the environmental impact of EV versus ICE, all right? We're talking about what comes out the back of the car produced by the engine. This is the first article I've seen that is really starting to talk about brakes and tires. Now that's interesting because both types of cars have brakes and tires. And I think if you're a conspiracy theorist like me, who thinks that there's a nefarious plan to get us out of our cars, then you'll probably see where I'm going with this. And if you haven't worked that out, I'm going to say it now. I reckon we're going to start to see an attack on cars in general because of the amount of pollution that they cause from the tyres and the brakes. So it's another way of saying, oh, your cars are so polluting, we must get everybody out of cars because the tyres and the brakes, they're polluting the atmosphere and the soil and the water, and there's nothing we can do about that because you need tyres and brakes. So you're just going to have to give your car back and walk. That's where I think all this is going. Let's go through the article a little bit. So basically what they're saying is the heavy weight of EVs causes them to go through tyres at a faster rate and that is polluting the atmosphere. However, I'm not completely convinced that that is the case. Yes, you would think that a heavier car would go through tyres at a faster rate. However, for every electrical car owner who says, I'm going through tyres at an alarming rate, you have one that says, I'm hardly using tyres at all. It's the same thing with the Range Rover thing. For every Range Rover owner that says, these cars are rubbish, they're terribly unreliable, you have one that says, I've had them all my life and they're absolutely brilliant. I don't know on that one. Stands the reason for me that if a car is 500 kilos heavier than normal because it's got a battery on it, it will be going through the tyres at a faster rate. But I'm not seeing that fully in the online forums. I'm not seeing it in the Facebook groups. And like I said, the EV people will argue with you until the cows come home. Uh, hopefully they haven't been farting too much because all of that is coming next. Because as we know, cows are killing the planet. But we're not talking about cows killing the planet today. Uh, we're talking about tires and brakes. Essentially, it goes on to talk about the fact that gasoline powered vehicles today aren't releasing the same amount of emissions as they used to. So it sort of says that engines are now nice and clean, but the problem is with the brakes and the tyres. The effects of tyre composition come down to the materials that the tyre is made from, the study reported. Light duty tyres are typically made from synthetic rubber, which is developed using crude oil, natural rubber adds, fillers and additives, some of which are recognised carcinogens. So all the stuff that your tyres are made of, when they break down and go into the atmosphere, can cause cancer. Emissions analytics tested the tyre wear on EV and gas-powered vehicles after driving them at least a 1,000 miles. The researchers used a sampling system to collect particles immediately behind each tyre and then measured the size of the particles emitted from the tread. It found the greater the vehicle's mass and weight, the more rapidly the tyre particulate emissions would be released due to the increased torque between the tyres and the road. Let me put that in normal speak for you. If a car is heavier and fatter, it's going to use more of the tyre and therefore produce more of the tyre into the atmosphere. It's absolutely not rocket science. But I would say as well, why aren't we also talking about road quality? Why aren't we talking about the quality of the road? Because if we have a major problem with 
tyre wear and the weight of cars, that's going to vary depending on the surface that you're driving on. So if the surface that you're driving on is rubbish and full of potholes, like a tiny backwater road that hasn't been maintained properly, like, I don't know, the M25, for example, uh, you're going to be going through more tyres and polluting more from your tyres than if you're driving on a perfectly brand new, uh, nicely tarmacked piece of, of, of blacktop. So I, I do think that the quality of the roads needs to come into this as well. A separate 2020 report by the emissions analytics firm said tyres are likely to be a major concern in the coming years as consumers switch to bigger and heavier cars. That's already happened. Everybody is driving SUVs, including me, <laughs> with my, uh, my BMW X5. Uh, but cars have gotten heavier. My Renault 10, which I can see over there with the doors open, drying out because it leaks so much and it's sunny today so I can dry my car out, only weighs about 970 kilos. It might even be less than that. So the weight of cars has gone up and therefore the amount of tyres that we're all using has gone up. Now, this then goes on to talk about the weight of cars and it's talking about Volvo's EVs and how much they weigh and the Ford F-150 EV truck and how much that weighs, 6,000 pounds or just under, was 2,700 kilos. But I don't really think we need to concentrate too much on what this article says. Let's just look at the last paragraph. I do recommend you read the article. The last paragraph says, the science is clear. Soot pollution is one of the most dangerous forms of air pollution and it's linked to a range of serious and potentially deadly illnesses, including asthma and heart attacks. Now, what concerns me there is, and I've underlined it, look, the science is clear. Where have we heard the science is clear before? <laughs> Usually it's coming from a someone who's, you know, speaking on behalf of the government whilst they're announcing new measures of lockdowns. That's what concerns me. I think we're moving to a, a phase in the electric vehicle internal combustion engine thing where we're starting to attack both types of cars based on things that they both have, like tyres and brakes. EVs are beneficial for the environment because they have no tailpipe emissions, so they produce less greenhouse gases than the average gas-powered car. So now we're saying that EVs are better for the environment. Uh, and according to the EPA, over an EV's lifetime, the total greenhouse gas emissions associated with the manufacturing, charging and driving the vehicle is typically lower than the standard vehicle. Okay, so they conclude the article by saying, although all cars produce crap off of their tyres and brakes, and heavier cars and EVs produce more of that, they're still better for the environment over their lifetime. And I have to finish this video by discussing just how long an EV's lifetime is, because as I've said many times before, this car's from 2005, it's done 222,000 miles and it's still going strong. That car is from 1969, it's 55 years old and according to the dyno that it went on just the other day, it's still going strong. So the emissions that were created in making most of these cars are, are banked and done. However, if these EVs are only lasting three, five, ten years, then the lifetime of an EV is much shorter. So we've got to talk about the greenhouse gas emissions involved with replacing your car every three years, which nobody wants to talk about because that's what drives the economy. So a slightly round the houses video there that essentially the Daily Mail are now bringing to our attention the fact that your brakes and tyres are polluting the atmosphere and giving everybody cancer. EVs are slightly worse for that, but EVs are better in the long run. I'm not so sure about all of that one. However, it does concern me that now we're starting to talk about uh, what is coming off tyres and brakes because where that goes next is, as I've said, with my tinfoil hat on, that is an attack on the car in general. I don't know what can be done to reduce the amount of stuff that's coming off tyres. I guess the next thing will be all oh, they'll look at brands and certain brands of tyres will be worse than other and others. And then you'll have to pay a tax on your car based on what kind of tyres it uses. And then that tax will go up year on year. And it's just going to be another little wedge that goes in to open up the gap to delete car ownership completely. I hope all of that made sense. As I say the article is there in the description for you. And um, thank you very much for watching.